once again? My name is Denise, D-E-N-I-S-E. Mm -hmm. Omer, U-L-M-E-R. And I'm the commander of the Latin American Legion, Post 71. So you said you brought that photo. I brought the photo, which is really was made into a uh, postcard. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now he fought in World War One, and he died over in France. I have no idea where this is at. Okay. There was no, uh, you know, other than the fact that he did. Oh, it's in 1916, and it was best wishes for a Merry Christmas, Wallace W. Fetzer, is what he wrote on it. Um, that could be anywhere over there. I have no idea where. And can we see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of the other things that I brought, it's not that old, is uh, 1965. And I thought it was interesting because <clears throat> most people say they miss the parades at Memorial Day, where we used to have you know, just a small contingent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> that would go from, oh, like the old shoe factory in Milton, I'm sure you don't know where that is, but it was one main route would go down uh, to Front Street in Milton along the river, go down to where American Home Foods, and then it would come back up, and it would either uh, culminate at one of the two cemeteries that we have. Every year we would you know, take turns with changing that and plus we also alternate what churches uh, that we have church services at to take and honor those, uh, which is one of the things I was going to bring up. Memorial Day service is the last Monday in May. Mm -hmm. People get Memorial Day, Armed Forces Day, and Veterans Day confused. They just think that it's an old way of saying it. Well, Memorial Day is really uh, to celebrate those who died while serving. This is why we have the church services, because we take and we have all the names of the veterans that have belonged to our post, and we ring a bell after each one is uh, read off the list that we have. Armed Forces Day is the third Saturday of May. It honors those that are presently serving. And then Veterans Day is you know, the infamous 11th month, 11th day, 11th hour, because that's when everything ended and there was, you know, no war again. Well, 11th day of November is when we have Veterans Day and that's to honor those who have served in the past, not necessarily died. That's covering everyone that has served in the past. Um, I just thought it's an important distinction because a lot of times they think it's honoring the dead and it's not. We forget about those that are out there serving now. And back to where I digress here, going back to the parades, they little by little, you know, just weaned out because um, of course everybody ages and I am 65 years old and I'm the youngest in my post for the Legion. I have, um, while my one, Second vice commander said he thought he was going to have to give it up because it was getting to be too much traveling for him. And somebody else that I was talking to said, oh, well, couldn't you talk him into it? And I said, no, I think he, I, he's paid his dues. He's 93 years old. Mm -hmm. So most of the men uh, or anyone that belongs to our Legion post, um, now this is the Legion part, not the bar part, are very old. And they're dying off. So we had nobody to, you know, and as you know, some things just can't be done with one person. So we have, haven't had a parade in, I forget how many years, which I'm trying to take and rectify that, you know. But this is going from that to this is how they used to be in 1965. This is all Memorial Day. It's not the Harvest Festival parade. It's not one of the communities. It was the Legion that put on the Memorial Day parade. Of course, we had different, I mean, we had uh, factions from, uh, we had school bands, we had the Keystoners, which was a drum corps of Milton, uh, post-71. 
And um, of course, we, all the kids, I can remember being a kid and being in the parades and everybody got a flag. And we just, you know, we marched, we just felt so good, you know, marching with a flag and, and knowing that we were going to go up and we'd listen, we'd be able to sit on, at that time of year, it was like a nice grassy hill at either of the cemeteries and we'd sit there and we'd listen to the speeches and afterwards they always had uh, a truck there that gave out ice cream to everybody that participated. So that was the best part, you know, <laughs> of course, being a kid, you know. But, um, and then we all, you know, had dignitaries, you know, like that was the mayor of Milton. Uh, we had, I don't even know if there's any baton uh, academies around anymore, but we had, you know, baton twirlers, fire companies, of course, always involved into it. But I just thought, you know, going, and this was a huge parade. This was a big thing. Um, to go from that to nothing, it, it's kind of sad, you know, to see it be, you know. Do you know when the last time there was a parade was? I think they stopped. <coughs> well, I've been, this is my second term of being commander. And, um, let's see. I don't think they had one as late as um, 2010. You know, I think that was the last of what they had. Right now we're in the process, we're trying to take and find, and maybe you guys can help me out with this. I don't know if you know what a low boy is in a truck, but it's the type of truck that the bed itself only is about that high. That's why they call it a low boy, and it stretches the same length as a regular tractor trailer bed, but then it goes up. Well, on the back part, which would be up against the actual cab of the truck, mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to get like two or three plywood panels, you know, and have them braced. But then I want to find somebody that can draw our symbol. Okay? Let me show you this better. Be, you know, as large as it is, as it is mm -hmm. and have, you know, that it's, you know, American Legion Post 71, and then our motto that we have is for God and country. Okay, and then what we're going to try to do is decorate it simply with, you know, like skirting, uh, maybe some buntings, and um, we're going to have the ladies' auxiliary, which are very old too. So we're going to, you know, have chairs up there for them to sit, seat in, sit in. Then we have uh, some of our older members. I want to get chairs up there for the guys to sit in. I'm going to try to get the different uniforms. Uh, some of the older ones and if I can you know maybe get some individuals to put them on because I don't know if you know my guys would be able to fit into them um, and kind of do like a timeline you know like from older to up to now and have everybody involved of course and the Sons of Legion mm -hmm. which is they call SAL and uh, just you know be able to participate that way but I need somebody that's good at design and can paint because each one of these is uh, means something. Do I have time to tell you about that? But well, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, well, anyways, like I said, it has. Bear with me. This outside pointed yellow is the rays of the sun that's supposed to, you know, form the background of the emblem and it suggests the Legion's principles which dispel the, uh, the darkness and violence and evil. The actual, uh, what we call the reef part, is, um, forms the center it's in loving memory of those brave comrades who gave their lives in service. The star itself is the victory symbol of World War I, symbolizes honor, glory, and constancy. The letters U.S. leave no doubt as to uh, the brightest star in the Legion's constellation. The inner rings, the smaller of the two rings set upon the star, represent service to our community, state, and nation. The larger outer ring pledges loyalty to Americanism. And then, of course, the words American Legion tie the rings together for truth, remembrance, constancy loyalty, honor, service, veterans affair. That's our four pillars of the American Legion, veterans, affairs, 
and rehabilitation, national security, Americanism, and last but not least, children and youth. And uh, I know I won't have time to read this, but I've, nobody ever salutes the flag anymore when you do have a parade. You ever notice that? A lot don't do that. I'll try to read this quick for you, but I thought this is neat. This is like the flag is talking to you. It says, hello, remember me. Some people call me Old Glory, others call me the Star Spangled Banner, but whatever they call me, I am your flag, the flag of the United States of America. Something has been bothering me though. I thought I might talk it over with you because it's about you and me. I remember some time ago, people lined up on both sides of the street to watch the parade and actually, I was leading every parade, proudly waving in the breeze. When your daddy saw me coming, he immediately removed his hat and placed it against his left shoulder so that his hand was directly over his heart. Remember? And you, I remember you standing there straight as a soldier. You didn't have a hat, but you were giving the right salute. And remember little sister? Not to be outdone, she was saluting the same as you with her right hand over her heart. Remember? What happened? I'm still the same old flag. Oh, I have a few more stars since you were a boy. This is an old poem. <laughs> A lot more blood has been shed since those parades of long ago. But now I don't feel as proud as I used to. When I come down your street, you just stand there with your hands in your pockets. And I may get a small glance and then you look away. Then I see children running around and shouting. They don't seem to know who I am. I saw one man take his hat off and look around. He didn't see anybody else with their hats off, so he quickly put it back on. Is it a sin to be patriotic anymore? Have you forgotten what I stand for and where I've been? Anzio, Guadalcanal, Korea, Vietnam. Take a look at the memorial honor roll sometime of those who never came back to keep this republic free. One nation under God. When you salute me, you are actually uh, saluting them. Well, it won't be long until I be coming down your street again, so when you see me, stay hurt. And I'll remember you by waving back. And I'll know that you remember. So <clears throat> that's all I have for right now. Uh, the other thing that I couldn't bring with me is there's a statue, several really, down at uh, American Legion Post Headquarters, at the uh, department of Wormleysburg, right across from Harrisburg. Uh, each one represents a different, like, Navy, uh, Army, Air Force, but it's also a different, you know, like one's World War I, one's World War II, one's Vietnam, you know, the different wars. They never had anything to represent the women. So they put me on the committee of this back in, uh, <coughs> I think it was 90, no, I forget the date, but it's been several years ago that they put me on this committee for it. Um, we had pictures taken of me, the man took and sculpted uh, because they asked me then to be the model. I tell people now, I just, you know, jokingly ask them, like, you know, not to be any slighted, but I say my bust has been immortalized, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, no, but it really is. I am proud of it. I just uh, couldn't believe that they had, you know, what an honor. And it just, uh, we did it as basic as we could to the, the uniform that suited all the ladies of every, you know, uh, army, navy, whatever, and then instead of uh, just one particular, we put all, you know, with the emblems on the base of this, the uh, statue, and put, you know, that it honored all women, and they put it in the back of, it almost looks like she's telling the men where to go. <laughs> so, so I tell my friends when I go down, if they see, you know, just clear off some of the pigeon remainings, you know, yeah. for me, and uh, say hello. But uh, that was a great honor. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> the other thing I did have, and I don't have it with me, is I had a letter from, I was one of the first 100 women to be appointed to West Point when they were opening up the academy. And uh, of course, that was your service and you know, your you know, capacity up here too, not, you know. And I had to decline because I was too old. I was 25, 26 years old. <laughs> so, uh, there were so many, you know, they look at enlistments, how long you have to be in, and they just thought that it would get to be, you know, because as soon as you come out, you're automatically attacked 
into four years being an officer. So they thought that was too old for me to be in at that age. So, of course, my dad was going nuts. He was like, you know, but uh, uh, that was fine. You know, my mom was a little happier about that. She didn't like it when I enlisted because she said, well, why don't you wait till, you, you know, you get, in, you know, drafted. She didn't want because that was Vietnam back then. And uh, the irony about that is not two days later, I got a draft notice. <laughs> and, it had, and she said, well, maybe it's a mistake. Your brother, because my brother is Dennis F. Ashby. And back then I was still, that was my maiden name, Denise. M. Ashby. Well, it had Dennis M. Ashby, and it had my social security number on it. <laughs> so I had to show up and tell him, hey, look, I'm not going to show up, so don't send the police for me. Uh, I, I, you, you don't draft women, <laughs> not yet, you know. And I thought, you know, I'm already going to be, you know, going in anyhow, so. But that was, I thought it was a, kind of an ironic story. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have for right now, other than uh, I can't carry them in. I have <laughs> just inherited the Elks Club in Milton had closed down, and they went over to join the membership of Danville. Well, unfortunately, they've closed because of unfortunate uh, happenings. And being the last exalted ruler <laughs> of the Elks Club, they asked me about if I would take it's almost as if like a, a who's who of Milton. Mm -hmm. uh, they have all these plaques that are about like this and they're solid brass. You're talking about several hundred pounds in the back of my vehicle and I just can't bring those up. And I'm in a dilemma what to do with them, you know, because you just don't hang these things off. I mean, they're heavy, you know, so. Mm -hmm. But thank you for your time. Yeah, and well, anybody that has in. any questions, you know, if, 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 at any time, um, can I just put a plug in for the Legion real quick? Sure. I, some of the things that we do as the American Legion, and I want to stress that we operate solely on our dues money that we get in uh, and donations. And of that dues money, we have to pay out to district and plus national. So that leaves us very little there. So we basically run on whatever donations or fundraisers that we do. Um, we try to take and have the money to donate to uh, local community like we gave a couple years ago we had $250 we gave the library you know we try to have a fund set up for children and youth that if they need you know we try to do this type of thing we conduct a, a memorial day service veterans day service flag day service and we have uh, american legion ball team that we support and we have funded that um, we have a flag retirement service where we show people how to properly dispose of a flag once it is no longer serviceable. Uh, we have the old um, mailboxes out you know, of our post to take and put those. We have, um, we participate in giving the uh, local police department money and plus help with uh, Halloween safety. We always try to take and remember everybody for, uh, to do remembrance for Pearl Harbor on December 7th. We do children's holiday party, we do a Christmas program and gifts for the veterans and the nursing homes. Uh, we try to help the needy families and of course we support the Choice for Tots. And our, one big thing that we do that I get a lot of other, because no one has been doing it, is we do a 911 service. And it's like I tell them, there would be no flourishes, no long speeches. We don't have a band. It's there to take and do one thing to honor you know, all those that passed away and tell them we will ne never forget. Uh, we visit the schools and try to let them know about flag etiquette. Uh, how are they supposed to know to respect the flag and that it belongs to our country if they don't know what it's about? You know, we're not there to brainwash, we're just there to try to let them know it's just a matter of respect. Um, we do a question and answer panel with uh, veterans uh, with the kids, you know, like just sit down and open up and let them come at us and, you know, I thought, you know, we'd get like some of the commercial type of questions, you know, like, oh, you know, where's your belly button or does that, you know, is that hot when you wear this? These kids, I mean, we're talking little kids, we're like, where exactly did you, did you do fighting and where were you at and what kind of vehicles did you drive? And I'm like, wow, 
I mean, you know, you got to give these kids more credit, than like, you know. Um, and just attending youth programs, like they had uh, one big one for us uh, around Memorial Day that they put on music and everything else, and all the kids did it out at the elementary school, and they invited us out to participate, to watch, instead of us doing something for them.